Matt, are you there? Nothing. That makes things extremely complicated. Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Bah, come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man. What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? There's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything. Then I need a pistol too. Makes sense. Well, what? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat. Okay. You want to come out? Hmm. Good idea. You stay put. I bought it second hand. A new... I can't get in. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. Soft towel, very comfortable. What? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here, on an out-of-control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'd be doomed without you. What are you waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. The tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. The situation isn't that desperate. Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. leads to the tender. It will be uncomfortable. I suppose there's a relatively safe space in the lee of the tent. An access for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. Not very handy. If the emergency pre <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! Locked. Okay. We'll do it the hard way. go outside with a towel around my head, it'll catch fire due to... I don't want to risk what little hair I have left. If I go outside with a... I don't want to risk what little... I bought it second hand, a new one. The emergency brake either was damaged in the explosion or was sabotaged, but whatever, it's not working. I... I think I should try to uncouple the engine. I mean, how else can I stop the train? 
Mad source, but if I don't stop the train... I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady Westmacott's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha! Matt, look. Thanks. Cover me, okay? No problem. Matt hasn't grasped the gravity. The engine and the coal tender are burning stronger and hotter. The airflow is feeding the flames. I have to decouple the wagons immediately. Sooner or later, the engine will be blown apart. Jumping off is not an option. We're going much too fast. Soaking up the cold water. Should do the trick. The coupling won't release because it's under too much tension. Uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? <sighs> well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. Achoo. 
And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there. But then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Heh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Girls are always honest. <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Ah, oh, man. The envelope that was... Where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye, and he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The fiend tried to kill us and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new. No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. But, Inspector... We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. I'm to return to Paris and explain myself. But sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. 
Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zelda. What is the constable's problem with me? I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice. And I can't carry you, too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train... The real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But... Wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume, just for a moment, that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven, who would have cared enough to uncover the truth. The chief of police, the politicians? No, they wanted to revel in a successful manhunt, and it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters... Nico! No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip. And there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next. And you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key, from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man. And I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine. And I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. I bought it last week, I guess.
In my younger years, I might have considered abseiling from the crane down to the ship, but those days are long past. Amazing how much luggage there is for so few passengers, and I'd guess that three quarters of it belongs to the women. Fine car, but nothing compared to the young lady who owns it. Who could she be? An actress? A millionaire's daughter? She's certainly attracting a lot of attention. I'll take an inconspicuous look up close. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting anyone to be crawling around on the ground in front of my door. Don't worry about it, miss. No harm done. That's good to hear, Mr... Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. May I ask your name? Patricia Mayers. Are you American? I am. Um, could you help me, please? Uh, certainly. Are you on your way to Egypt? Yes. Are you on holiday? My father works for a railroad company there. And is rebuilding the country after the war. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. One more. You're lucky to have a father who takes you to so many interesting places. Oh yes, lucky me. Aren't you interested in Egypt? The pyramids, the history. I would have been more interested in a father who doesn't travel 300 days a year. <laughs> I'm sure your father regrets that he can't always be with you. No doubt. And I'm sure he always wanted the best for me. But that doesn't stop him from thinking only about himself far too often. Bring my luggage on board, please. Excuse me? It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. Impertinent. The sea is quiet today. Ideal conditions for a cruise. Constable Oliver seems to be a little... simplistic. But I don't think he's a bad policeman. The way he reacted in the tunnel and got the train moving. Hats off. Hello, Constable Olivier. It's Oliver. I just wanted to say that you did a good job in the tunnel. Hmm, thanks. How did you know how to get the train moving? I come from a family of miners, and my uncle is an engine driver down the mine. I see. And you looked over his shoulder? Yeah, best way to learn. Did Legrand tell you about his theory? That it could be the real Raven? Of course he did. We're partners. But the modus operandi doesn't fit at all. The Raven wasn't a bomber. We have the letter. And the feather. That's his symbol. Anyone can put a feather in an envelope. You would know. What's that supposed to mean? It was you. What was me? You put the envelope on the safe. To blow myself up? You threw the bomb away. And now you're the famous hero, right? And the Raven must have paid you pretty well. That is ridiculous. Is it? Only you and I and Legrand were in the freight car. One of us must have put the envelope on the safe. Legrand didn't. And I didn't think about it. Hmm. Is the doctor afraid to board the ship? Hello, Dr. Gebhardt.
Ah, the hero of the hour. The hero of the hour, but out of work soon. Oh, you won't be a policeman anymore? Yes, but on my old beat, which is almost as good as being out of work. <laughs> I understand. Is your new job bothering you? On the contrary. I wasn't sure whether I made the right decision until now. I'm from the Black Forest, you know. There are only mountains there. <laughs> no ships. But now... <sighs> the salty breeze, the atmosphere... I think I want to stay at sea forever. The sea is one thing. The passengers are another. <laughs> it will be okay. What do you know about the Baroness? Mm, nothing, really. Did you talk to her in the tunnel? No. Her butler was looking after her, and I was busy with Miss Miller. As you can imagine, it was a shock for her to see her son rolling away on a burning train. That's understandable. So... We were all glad when we heard about your brave deed. Have you already met the captain? Mario Di Conti. Heard of him? Should I have? He is something of a star in Italy. A war hero. In the First World War, when he was a young man, he sank more enemy ships than anyone else. In the Second World War, well, he had some you know, personal problems. You mean, like the ones you buy in bottles and pillboxes? Mm. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> anyway, sending him into combat was out of the question. They gave him a supply ship instead, and he became a hero again. His ship, part of a convoy from Palermo to North Africa, was the only one that made it, with an extra 100 seamen who he rescued from the other ships. Impressive. To say his health is rather shaky these days would be an understatement. I think most of my time on board will be spent dealing with his numerous ailments. Well, there's nothing left for me to do but to wish you a good trip. Oh, you are not coming with us? Unfortunately, no. I'm to go back to Zurich. What a pity. Take care, Dr. Gebhardt. Oh, I just remembered we found these in the tunnel. Are they yours? I'm afraid so. Strophantine. Do you have heart problems? Hmm. Maybe it's for the best that you're not coming along. Too much excitement could be bad for your health. You mean, if I don't do anything, I'll probably have a few more years to live? That's right. Keep your chin up. Are you? Hello, Baroness. Ah, Inspector. Constable. Poppycock. You won't be a constable much longer. When they find out how you rescued that little boy, they'll have to promote you to Inspector. Very kind of you to say so, Baroness. I hope you survived the adventure in the tunnel unharmed. Scandalous. You book a first-class cabin, and then you're walking on the rails. <laughs> They wanted to bundle me off in a bus, without my luggage. The circumstances, madam. I insisted on a limousine and didn't leave until all my luggage was recovered. Did you know that the real Eye of the Sphinx wasn't even on the train? I had no idea. Inspector Le Grand seems to prefer to keep me in the dark, although I'm the one paying for all of this. The Inspector is ensuring the safety of the Eye. Well, obviously. All the same, it was you who did the real work on the train. I hope that the remainder of your trip to Cairo will be less stressful. You aren't coming with us. I'm afraid Inspector Legrand doesn't want my company. Now, where's my damn butler? James, there you are. Is the Inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? Uh, well, actually... Baroness? Baroness? Can you hear me? She fainted. No. No. 
go. Baroness? Again, harder. Hello. Can you hear me? I... Help me up. Uh, perhaps we should... Now. How did Dr. Gebhardt? No, 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 Doctor. Just a little moment of weakness. Your arm, James. Take me to the ship. But of course, madam. That was no moment of weakness? She saw something that shocked her. Or someone. Very interesting. Especially since she doesn't want to admit it. That's a fine automobile. But not even a stately sedan like this can handle all the Baroness's luggage. She was lucky that the second and third freight cars weren't buried in the tunnel. Most of her things made it unscathed. Who or what did she see? Neither of them seems to have noticed what happened down here. <laughs> You'll have a tough time with her. How does one get aboard without a ticket? Hmm. Not brilliant, but it's a possibility. have here, Signore. This is Constable Anton Zellner. Signore Zellner, I heard about your fates in the mountains. Welcome aboard the MS Lydia. Thank you, Captain. I didn't know you'd be taking part in the journey, but I'm glad to have you with us. I'll have a nice cabin prepared for you immediately. The Constable will not be joining us. He has other duties. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to hear about his adventures from the man himself. I'd like to accept your offer, but unfortunately, higher powers prevent it. I am sorry to hear that. We are by no means full, and have plenty of room for one more passenger. The constable just wants to have a quick look around and then leave before we set sail. When will that be? Oh, in about uh, 15 minutes. There you have it, Constable. May I ask how to get to the cargo hold? Oh, Signori, there are much nicer places on board. But I'm interested in the cargo hold. Why is that? One of the trunks seems suspicious to me. Someone could be hidden in it. You... <laughs> you want to imply that the most brilliant and probable thief in all of Europe is stowing away in a trunk? That's not his style. That's what makes it more likely that it's not him, but a copycat who's behind all this. And a copycat's style might include doing whatever it takes. Like hiding in a trunk if they've lost the ticket. Oh, come now. Actually, it would be possible for a registered passenger to board the ship without a ticket. What do you mean? You can't buy a ticket for the Lydia at the counter. You book the trip in advance. We know the names of all the passengers. As long as a passenger is on the guest list, we let them board the ship. Doesn't matter if they have a ticket or not. And did any of the passengers board without a ticket? I couldn't say. We ask for a name and check it on the list. The tickets are no more than souvenirs for the passengers. So much for your trunk theory. Regardless of what you say, I would still like to examine the cargo hold. All right, then, if you like. But we'll meet here again in ten minutes. Captain De Conti, before we depart, I'd like to send two telegrams. Certainly, Inspector. The cargo hold is over there. You can enter through a door on the forecastle. The horn will sound twice, five minutes before we set off. That's the signal for all the dock workers to leave the ship. Understood, Captain. Follow me to the bridge. You can send your telegrams from there. 
My time is running out. If I don't find anything in the cargo hold, my cruise will be over before it even begins. Oh no. Oh, what's this? Aha. The door to this locker is ajar. Empty. Hmm, the left three lockers are locked. That's the young woman's cabriolet. Apparently they absolutely had to take it to Egypt. At daddy's expense, of course. <clears throat> Hello? Come on out. The game's up. I... I'm opening the trunk. Hello? The shards are... I startled too easily. It would be best if no one found out about this. There's some blood and hair stuck to the pipe. Hair I really can't afford to lose. I'll hold it on the blood spattered end. After all, we already know who the victim is. Who 
whoever locked the door is stronger than me. It's already dark. I should be careful. The gunman may still be nearby. To Zelna. I wanted to determine whether the gun had been fired recently, Inspector. I mean, what are you doing on the ship? I was jumped in the cargo hold. Of course you were. Here, look. Careful how you hold it. There could be fingerprints on the end. Surely you don't expect me to believe you. I was inspecting the trunk. I found it in the cargo hold and it was clear that someone had hidden inside it to board the ship. Some people are willing to go to great lengths to be a part of this journey. Indeed. Whoever it was, they struck me on the head from behind with the pipe while I was looking for clues. Oh, and they shot at me as well. Ridiculous. You wanted to come along. Orders be damned, and so you found a way to stay here. I should throw you overboard. I would have dreamed up something less painful. Hmm, true. That doesn't look good. See? And there's a bullet wedged in a wooden crate down there. I don't have a gun. The doctor should have a look at it. Come with me. Inspector Legrand and Constable Zelna. So you have decided to join us on our journey after all. So it would seem. We are searching for Dr. Gebhardt. I'm just fine, Captain Conti. <laughs> the Conti. I'm in control. I can manage. Tell James he absolutely must wake me at a quarter to ten. Certainly, madam. Absolutely. I shall see that he does. And now I shall return to my chambers. You'll be in the bar tonight at ten, Inspector. If that's what you wish. It will be spectacular. I promise. The fresh sea air and perhaps a glass of champagne to many. But I'm glad that you decided to join us on our journey to Cairo. Not quite voluntarily, so he says. I was jumped from behind. But no, that... that is... Dr. Gephardt should have a look at him, Captain De Conti. Of course. Please, have a seat in the saloon, Constable Zelna. I'll summon the doctor. Ah, Doctor, there you are. Our brave Constable Zelna was attacked. Struck on the head. Oh. Sit down, please. Now, please, tell me exactly what happened. I think you've got a stowaway on board. I was jumped. Intolerable. I'll have the crew search every nook and cranny of the ship. And of course, Mr. Zelna, you are cordially invited to travel as our special guest. Good to know that at least one man doesn't want to throw me overboard. Is it bad? Yes, it hurts a lot. I spoke with Dr. Gebhardt. He suffered a violent blow to the back of the head. I cannot really say how bad it is. But I can. It really hurts. Why didn't anyone come looking for me? Didn't anyone notice that I didn't come back from the cargo hold? We did search for you, but we couldn't find you. Who was supposed to search the cargo hold? Constable Oliver. I'll have a talk with him about that later. I should hope so. How many fingers do you see? Fingers? Mr. Zellner. I see five fingers. Three of them stretched out. Okay. Where are we? And, and what time is it? I must have been out for ages. It's just after 8 p.m. You just missed dinner. 
but we'll all meet here in the saloon at 10 o'clock to have a drink together. Greeting the passengers personally is a tradition I will not break, even on this unusual journey. You're all right now, Constable. The bleeding has stopped and the wound looks good. You may have a mild concussion. You just need a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, your only worries will be a headache and an impressive bump. Thanks. That's a good enough reason to celebrate. Enough about crooks and thieves. From now on, you can start to enjoy your free cruise. <laughs> Inspector! What? A dark shadow. Upper deck, just now. Go, let's have a look. I'll join you. Me too. No, you stay here. Do you want to make this an argument? Robert, go to the Baroness and don't let her out of your sight. Zellner, you're coming to the port side. Doctor, you go to starboard. I'll start at the forecastle and work my way back to the two of you. Understood? But... Baroness von Trebitz! Hello? Baroness von Trebitz? Open the door! Dr. Gebhardt insisted on coming along, but now he doesn't seem to be sure if that was a good idea. Dr. Geb, Dr. Gebhardt insisted, but now he doesn't.